and here I am talking to you from space. I'm obviously joking. Okay, so you've decided that you want to make a career out of being a writer, but you're struggling with the idea of quitting your job and working full time to really focus on your indie author career. Well, I am going to share with you five different ways that you can work from home in order to supplement your writing so that they won't take hours and hours and hours of your day while you could be writing, focusing on your career. But first, I'm Kelly and Wolf, and please like and subscribe. I make videos on indie author marketing and branding and writing. So, I bet you're wondering, what is up with this background? Why am I in space? <laughs> I will get to that in just a second. I promise you, there is a reason for that. So, some of you may know that I am originally an archaeologist. I got my bachelor's in cultural anthropology and sociology and then I went off to England where I still am living and um, got my master's degree in environmental archaeology and paleoeconomy. I have excavated in Spain, Italy, Scotland, England and the south and central Florida. Um, I was a full-time archaeologist and now I am not. <laughs> the reason why is um, I am focusing on being an indie author, which is my first passion. I wanted to be a, I want to, <laughs> I am, uh, working on being a full-time author and while managing my uh, self-publishing company, Grim, Grim House Publishing. So, from there, I am going to start off with my first uh, thing that you can do, which is teach English online. This is why I have this beautiful spaceship background. See if you can see that see better. <laughs> so I work for a company called Say ABC, and they are off of Beijing. And I teach Chinese students from the ages of 4 to 14. Some of them are really like, like 4 years old, yeah. And um, it is a lot of fun. It is so much fun. And uh, my hours are, they start at 9.40 in the morning. And the last class will end at 1.40 p.m. You only have, they're like 40 minute classes. I think that's right. Um, 1.40 p.m maybe two. You will only be able to work uh, for four classes, so because of the time difference, and um, it really, it allows me the rest of the day to focus on my indie author career, which is writing every day and uh, doing edits if I need to and managing my Grim House company while doing other admin things because I'm only teaching four times a day. So, Let's talk about the requirements. These can differ from company to company, but every company right now in China requires you to have your bachelor's degree. This can be in anything. You do not need a bachelor's in English. Uh, it, mine's in cultural anthropology, like I said. Another requirement is you do need to have your TOEFL or TESOL certification. That is your teaching English as a foreign language certification. This is very easy to acquire. Uh, many teachers are getting it from Groupon, which has $5 <laughs> courses for your TOEFL. These courses are really easy. Um, they're just very basic. English language grammar courses and they also teach you how to teach students of all ages even though for these companies we're teaching kids your TOEFL certification does give you that um that ability to teach adults as well if you do want to find a company that does that and they they show you how how Chinese students um you know they, they don't have certain sounds 
or they, uh, we don't have certain sounds that they use in China and vice versa. They, they won't be able to say certain sounds um, that we have in English. So how to teach them certain things. So it is a very useful class anyways, if you're going to do this. Like I said, Groupon has them for $5 as opposed to my 70 pound one that I took from the actual toffle.co.uk. But you don't need to because these companies, like they will take your Groupon certification. You need high speed internet. That's for certain. So you can travel with this, travel and work, but you do need to make sure that your internet speed is high and, and very, very good. So you do need to have an ethernet cable plugged into your laptop. So that's like something that you need to like make sure that wherever you travel to, there is a ethernet connection. Uh, you need good lighting, a good mic, and camera. Some companies require you to have some experience. For say ABC, their experience requirement was basically like, have you ever uh, tutored before? And I have because I have younger siblings, so I was able to, to, to put that down on my CV and I got hired. Pros and cons to teaching English online. Yeah, one big pro is that you can work from anywhere. I'm expecting to excavate in Italy this summer and I will be able to still make money and teach while I go. And when I visit my family in the US, I'm able to take my stuff and work from home over there. So that is a huge pro. One of the pros over in the UK is that my class starts at 940 in the morning. So it's not incredibly early and I still end pretty early in the day. So I still have like the rest of the day to do my writing. The pay, what's the pay like for say ABC? The base pay is 15 for a 40 minute class. So you get 15 an hour. Why base pay? Uh, because most of these companies give you bonuses on top of your base pay. One bonus is to make it to class early. You have to be on the platform uh, five minutes before the class starts and they give you an extra dollar for that every single class. You get an extra dollar also for not being absent every single class. So those are like just very easy extra dollars that you get. So with all of the bonuses, I don't remember what they all are. I'm sorry, <laughs> I probably should have looked this up, but I usually get about 18 an hour for, for teaching. Another pro that I wanna mention is no promo effort. The reason why I say this is for say ABC, the company books you. You don't need to make an intro video and try to sell yourself to the parents who book you. Other companies though, like VIP Kid, they do require some promo efforts. Um, so that's one thing that I love about Say ABC and whenever I search for, for companies to work for, to teach English, I, I look for that because I don't, I, I have too much with writing and trying to promote my books and my brand to have to worry about promoting myself as a teacher too. So keep that in mind when you're looking for companies. Uh, one of the cons is you need a neutral North American accent for many companies. For say ABC, you can have a British accent or an American accent. I have what we call a Miami accent because I am half Cuban, half Honduran, and Miamians have, we, we do have, we have like a strong uh, accent. I wasn't hired to several companies that I applied for because in their eyes, I do not have a North American accent or a neutral North American accent. I still have, my Spanish comes out in in the way that I speak and um, some companies it's like no you cannot sound like that so that's a con it was a con for me depending on where you live the time difference might be a con so in the US if I were working from Miami my class would start at 4 40 a.m. that could be a con for some people if you're in California, 
that is a lot earlier and you're probably going to be teaching at night and then going to bed really late instead of waking up at, I don't know, two in the morning, I guess. When I move back to the US and I continue teaching though, 4.40 in the morning is going to be daunting, but at the same time, you're making money really, really early in the day, and then you have the entire day to do your author work. So that's both a con because you have to get up super early and also a pro. <laughs> Speaking of getting up really early, another con is the high energy you have to bring into the classroom. So I think that's also a pro and a con because if you're getting up that early and you have that much high energy and you're drinking that much coffee, I'm not going to go back to sleep after that and I'm going to be productive. So in that respect, it's a pro, but it's also a con for some people who are not morning people. If you're not a morning person, then this may not be the right um, supplementary uh, career choice for you. <laughs> Another con, let's see, um, props. This isn't a huge con for me. Um, I do want to give you the advice of not spending a lot of money on props because you can make them. I make, see, I just print stuff out and this is a prop. This is like a little map that's getting all bent. We have reward systems. This was for Halloween, you know, and if they do a good job, they get a monster. There we go, monster house. <laughs> so you can just make your props and um, don't, don't even worry about it. So some people worry about having to travel and carry all of these things with them. Don't even worry about that. Just, you know, have like a whiteboard and um, some like an eraser and, and markers and you're good. You're good to go. Bookings. You may not get booked right away. So what you want to do is you want to be hired for at least two companies. At the moment, I am waiting for the startup Tom ABC to start work. And that will be my other company so that whenever I don't have bookings with one, I can have bookings with the other. So that is my number one, which is Teach English Online. I love it. I love it because it's like the kids are fabulous and the high energy that you bring in and that they bring in, it starts off my day really positive. And after that, I can get to writing and it just, it's awesome. So that's definitely one that I, I advise, but if you don't have a bachelor's, no worries. There is something else you can do. The second thing you can do while for, to work at home is Skillshare. Don't know if you've heard of Skillshare, but currently I am creating a lesson plan for myself with my experiences in writing and making a series of videos to upload to Skillshare. So what is Skillshare? Skillshare is a website where you can teach, make videos teaching. So these videos are pre-recorded and you can um, just take them from your own home and teach something that you have a skill for, for example. I'm going to be making videos on world building because in the books that I write, which are urban fantasy, I do a lot of fan fantasy world building. As a writer, you probably have a lot to share, but it doesn't even need to be about writing. There, Just go on there and see what the different types of topics are and um, create a series of videos. The reason why I keep saying a series of videos is if you just make one video, um, you're not going to be making enough to really supplement an, a monthly income. So what you want to do is you want to create your intro video to get them hooked. Now this is going to be a lot like how we get our readers. You're going to have a hook line, something catchy. You're going to have your blurb in your video to really pull them in. Bring in the conflict question, something that they are, you know, that your target audience or your target student is, um, is battling with and get them hooked into that so that then they want to keep going and watching your videos. Now, 
these students are paying monthly for Skillshare. So they're not necessarily uh, paying you or you're not convincing them to, um, to, to just have you as a teacher so that they pay you. No, they're paying a Skillshare monthly and then they have access to kind of like a KU, they have access to all of these different lessons. And then Skillshare pays you for the amount of videos watched. So that that I think is really, really great. It's like it's like Kindle Select, but for teaching in videos. So what you want to do is you want to create maybe nine lessons, nine video lessons, and you can create, you know, different topics and then you have them all there. Now, one of the pros to doing this is your videos, unless you take them down, your videos stay on Skillshare forever. So in the future, you can be accumulating more students as more students write you good reviews and you know, and your videos are really like a hot topic or whatever for, for your target and you will be receiving royalties on these videos for as long as Skillshare is around or as, until you take them down. A con is this does require some time, which is why I advise to create your lesson plan and then create several videos so that you're dropping them each week. Right off the bat, at first, you're not going to get a lot of students. So if you need money right now, then Skillshare is going to take a little bit of time in order for you to start making money off of it. But the good thing about it is you don't need to take it down. So you can create these videos and then work on something else. Maybe if you do have a bachelor's degree, teach English online and let these these videos start producing income for you. So that is one thing I haven't started on Skillshare yet. So I will make an updated video on how that is actually going. But I do hear some really great things by other indie authors that are on Skillshare and they are making an income from it. So that is another thing that you can do. So even if you don't start making money with Skillshare right away, you still will in the future. So it's it's like an extra income that you can have the ball rolling while you're working on your writing and while you're possibly teaching English online, or even if you are still working at a brick and mortar place for the time being, it's something. Now, number three is a high promo uh, area, which is working on your affiliates from early on. When you're an indie author, you need to be thinking about creating your website, creating your brand, creating your platform, having your social media platforms, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so while you're doing all of this, look to see where your expertise are in writing or even in marketing and what teachers or companies are offering. Um, affiliate marketing that you can hop on so that you can put them onto your platforms. So if you are writing blogs, if you are vlogging on YouTube, if you've started a podcast, see what affiliate programs there are so that you can start hooking your viewers or listeners or readers into clicking on these affiliate links so that they bring you an income. A pro to this is that it is applicable to being a writer. However, if you are not interested in uh, reaching out to other writers, then this might not be suitable for you at all. But you might want to reconsider that while you're first starting out because what do you have as a writer to bring to the table for other writers and reach out other writers, especially if you are trying to supplement your writing career right from the beginning. There is effort to promote and you do need a website though. If you want to start a YouTube channel, then you can use your YouTube channel for your affiliate marketing, but 
making videos, doing all of this, it does require effort, time, practice. For example, I have taken an entire two hours <laughs> to record this video. So this isn't the easiest thing and also you still need to get a following. But I do want to talk about starting a YouTube channel in one of these, so not yet. Um, back to affiliate marketing though, some of them that are really good is Publisher Rocket by Dave Chesson. If you are, um, if you've already just published a book or you have several books out and you don't know how to create AMS ads successfully so that they work for you and actually, um, are getting out there and, and bringing you money, um, then I highly advise in purchasing Publisher Rocket. I could, I can't do it without that because Publisher Rocket enables you to get the keywords that are suitable and fit for your target audience for your book. So it is a huge, it brings you a huge advantage in your indie author career. And Dave Chesson offers an affiliate program. So you can um, offer it to people and, and say really great things about it because it is so awesome. <laughs> Not just to get, uh, to, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't promote anything that I don't believe in, that I don't use and work and, and see that it actually benefits me. But you know, the, it's such a great program that I want to. So Publisher Rocket it has a great affiliate program. Any other courses that you may take to that benefits your writing, that makes you a better writer and you want to share it with other writers, see if they have affiliate programs, make them applicable. I first started affiliates, uh, be being an affiliate for Amazon. They are tough. They are tough because you never know what products um, are, are okay to, to put on your website and what products aren't going to, you know, they, that doesn't qualify. Um, and they don't let you know either. It may have changed, but I stopped with Amazon because they're such a pain. So in my experiences, I will just be, you know, I would talk about a product or a book and I will link it through my affiliate program. And lo and behold, people are clicking on it, but I'm not making anything because Amazon doesn't think that it's suitable in order for it to be in the affiliate program. And because I would be stagnant and not making money for three months, then I then they completely take the affiliate program um, from under you and they don't even tell you this. So I personally don't um, advocate Amazon for affiliate programs, but if you can make it work for you, then that's a whole other platform that you can use to be an affiliate. The third thing that I want to talk about is promoting your own services. Now, this may be an obvious one, but a lot of people may not know that it's not just about um, offering them on your website and then trying to spend a lot of money on Google ads or reach out through your, you know, your Facebook channels and Twitter and Instagram because that's a lot of promo, but you can get onto Fiverr and say, well, I have purchased Vellum, which is a great formatting software. And instead of people spending 150 and up for a formatter or even paying the 200 for Vellum, why don't I offer them whatever you want to offer them? If it's $25 or $30, $35, I've seen people offer $40 and you know, offer uh, formatting their manuscript for them for that little amount. And it's vellum, so it's available for anybody to purchase. It's really uh, simple. That can also be an affiliate program, by the way. And, um, but some people don't have the, t the 200 or the Mac computer that is required for Vellum in order to purchase the software and they still have to pay 150 or up for a formatter. So then $35 might be like, well, okay, I can buy Vellum in the future, but this person is willing to do it for me for this little amount of money. And that's 35 bucks for you. And let's say three or four of those a day, 
it's something and it you know and it does work and what else can you do proofreading up put it on fiverr beta reading some people even uh charge for critique partners or 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 being a beta reader so that's something else that you can also offer so last but not least number five i am going to mesh this into one and that is creating your own youtube channel or your podcast and the reason why i've meshed this into one is because both of them will offer to pay you after you have a certain amount of subscribers and you can get paid per ad views now creating your youtube channel though is like i mentioned uh, a little while ago is no easy feat you have to have a good camera you need to uh, practice being in front of the camera. If you see some of my earlier videos, it's ridiculous. I stammer and it took me like five hours to record the video. It has taken me two hours to record this one because I'm still very new on YouTube. And it's, yeah, I mean, I have a new mic. To so show you, you know, a mic and a ring light and you do need some props in order to make the the screen you know bright and it's a little bit of a pain but if it's something that you want to do then it takes effort but in the long run it is way worth it and it's fun and you meet people in the community of youtube especially for the author tube and it's it really does pay off Creating a podcast is um, something else that does require some things, but if you already have a mic for your YouTube channel, I have not created a podcast yet. It is something that I still want to do, and I'm not really sure how long it takes in order to monetize it, so I can't really talk too much about that, but I do know that um, you still they still do pay you for ad uh, listens, so that is that is another thing. And that's it. Those are my five things. Really quick though, there are other ways to make money while writing. And one of those things is um, having a Patreon page, you know, and you don't need to have it the way I do because I offer uh, services through my Grim House Publishing, but there are other if indie authors who just um, offer free art copies and, um, beta reading and just offering a, a lovely community based around their world building and their books and they can offer uh, character art and all sorts of things. However, that does require a lot of self-promo, which one of the ways is through your YouTube channel or through your Facebook or your website and Getting a following on Patreon has proven to be difficult for me, but other authors find that they have enough people in order to at least pay for cover design or, you know, maybe one round of editing, etc, etc. So I, it, that's why I didn't mention it as one of my five, because it does take a lot to make money. And even though the affiliate programs do take a lot to make money. It's something that you want to start doing from the very beginning anyways, um, because eventually that will grow and be sustainable. What else is there? Being a transcriptionist, I know someone who's not an author, uh, but they own their own business in real estate. And during uh, slow months, they are still a transcriptionist and it's something that they have done for many, many years. It requires a little bit of schooling to get a certificate, but once you are, once you have done that, you can work from home, listening to whatever company has hired you. In her, in her case, it's uh, boats, people who are uh, inspecting boats, and then she's listening it through it, through headphones and writing everything that they say in order to digitize the information. Being a transcriptionist, you can work from home. Some of the transcriptionists don't work from home. They work at courtrooms. Obviously, if you're trying to be an indie author, don't go for that one, <laughs> but you get the idea. So there are still many things out there. Um, you'd have to do some research on uh, how to be a transcriptionist if that's one way to go. But out of the five things that I've listed, 
Um, you can basically do them all if you want, or you can have a combination of two or more. If you don't have a bachelor's, then obviously you won't be able to uh, teach English online, but you would be able to start your YouTube channel, create your affiliate programs, start making videos for Skillshare, and set up a foundation that is going to be bringing you money while you write and while you focus on your indie career. Because at the end of the day, that is our focus. It is to create our indie author company for ourselves. You have to think of this as a business because that is what it is and is very advantageous and helpful if we are staying wherever we want to stay or travel or write or whatever but so that we are actually focusing on writing more books. Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. I really hope that you found this video useful and if you did and you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys very soon. Goodbye.